Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the On This Date in MLB podcast, where we cover past events, current events, and we do some fun baseball stuff on the side. You already know who Kevin and I are, but today is a very special episode because we have Flank Thomas in the flesh, live and direct, as a guest, our very first guest ever, and it's just an honor, man. What's up, bro? How you doing? Appreciate you guys having me, dude. It's it's I love your content. Been a long time follower and commenter on the gram. And so it's, uh, dude, it's just awesome to chop it up with you fellas. Uh, thank we you for thank you, you for covering out the thank you for covering out the time of your day, man. Appreciate that. Oh, of course, dude. Yeah, I'm telling you, man. I love, I love, I look, I fiend for your posts, dude. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, oh, where's another one? Where's another one? <laughs> I yeah, appreciate that. that. So as you guys know, if you guys have been watching the 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 podcast, we're we're on the this is the 22nd episode, so it's gonna go as business as usual. We're gonna cover two features and we're gonna talk a little bit of news and then we will get to know Flank Thomas. We'll know a little more about his journey and what he does now and where you can find him. And before we even start, uh, do you wanna tell the people where they can find you, bro? Man, I'm gonna make it nice and simple. Flankthomas.com for all your flanking needs. There Not Frank. Go. I am not no no way, shape, or form, no relation to uh the big hurt. That's all him. Flank with an L. There you go. There you go. That's what's so up. Did, did you get your name? Uh was it do was it something related to Frank Thomas or how how'd you come oh, up with that? Absolutely, dude. So when I played, I was six I was six five. And when I played ball, I was right. 245 pounds. Still not as large as him. But uh, when I got into my content creation, I had a really stupid nickname that I was using. <laughs> it, anyways, it, it was called Germany Acorn. I was streaming to a grand total of zero people. And I, and I was playing Call of Duty. That's what I was streaming. Okay. And I don't, I wasn't getting my frags like, because I have good aim. My aim is terrible. Trash. Basura. <laughs> the way I got my kills is, is by having map knowledge and flanking people. So... Uh. I was watching the World Series one night, celebrating my favorite holiday, and uh, it was a light bulb moment. I was like, I saw him. It was on Fox. I saw him in the studio, whatever. I saw the big hurt, and I'm like, oh, ding, there we go. And then it just clicked, dude. I bought the domains. I switched all my names. Like, did not. I figured out like the the logo, all the the logo, all that, bro. Right. Yeah, it's always it's always such a like. Don't go a moment on when you have those epiphanies, when that it just clicked. Yup. Yup. Absolutely. So, so yeah, let's, uh, let's get cracking with these features. Do you want to lead it off, Kevin? Yes, sir. So the first one for this week, we got, uh, our boy Ted Williams coming back from military service. Uh, he, and he missed three years and he actually hit the first pitch he saw in, in uh, spring training. Uh, he went ahead and hit a bomb, uh, came back like it never left. Right. Right. Uh, Probably do that again. Whenever he gets like, unfrozen. That's crazy to me. Like, <laughs> uh, like, like even, even for me, when, when I have a week off vacation, I, uh, I work, like it t- it'll take me a good two to three weeks to get back into routine. Right. <laughs> yep. So for, three years. For, exactly. So for him to take three years off and come back and he won his first, uh, AL MVP award, uh, just, you know, kudos to him, you know, and he, wow. I, 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 it just blows my mind that you mentioned that. In what universe can you bat 406 with 37 home runs and 120 <laughs> RBIs and not yeah, a 1287 OPS? And he didn't even win the MVP. Exactly. For exactly. Real. No. And then, and then in 1942, he won the triple crown, like just took it to another level and still got robbed. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh, so, that's hilarious. I believe. I believe and 47 too he won the triple crown again that's his sec- like, second triple yep. crown yes it, so he, he like probably could pretty guy probably could have had should have had at least five mvp awards right at least Only five, five or seven. exactly that's so that's wild i didn't mean to I, cut you off but that's nah, wild it, yeah it's it's we we yeah. talked about it one time too huh, kevin Howell. i don't get he it could have probably been up there with like um with the bonds type uh, amount of, of MVPs, you know, like with, oh, yeah. Rounds. I think Bonds has like seven. I think Williams yeah. would have been up there easily. Yeah. yeah, absolutely should have been. Wow. That's like, uh, that's, that's insane, dude. That's uh, insane. It's, it's, it's stupid, man. Like, I, yeah. it makes this no, no sense uh, on video game numbers, right? To, to be mm. honest. Oh, Joe DiMaggio's hit streak was one of those years. Uh, yeah. yeah. 42, I believe, or 41. Yeah. Uh, 42, he lost it to another Yankee, uh, Joe Gordon. And the Yankees won the, the World Series that year, so that maybe that maybe factored into that. Wow. But, 
Yeah, man. Nin- 1946, he came back with 38 homers, 123 RBIs, and a 342 average. Uh, led the majors in OBP, slugging, walks, runs. His war was 10.9 and OPS plus 215. That's... <laughs> I can't even do that in MLB The Show. <laughs> right? <laughs> nuts, oh, my bro. God. When my, when, when my created player in, uh, <laughs> with all the adjusted sliders and shit. <laughs> Still can't do it. <laughs> Oh my gosh, dude, that's yeah. insane! So, I mean, um, come on. Also, like dug up into his some of his stats before he even took off. So he debuted in '39, and he took off after the '42 season. In that span, he um he put together a 190 OPS plus. Uh, for an OPS flat, it's a 1.123. Um, 127 home runs in that span, 749 hits. 515 RBI. I mean, the man did it all. And he, and in 2,615 wow. at bats in those seasons, he only struck out 196 times. So just, uh, yeah, I'm looking at that strikeout to walk ratio and it's insane. Dang, it's, it really I've never is. seen anything like that. That's insane. That's like, uh, dude, that's right. even better than Tony Gwynn. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. and if it was, as if, if it wasn't enough, that man dominated the baseball world. When he went back to serve his country during the Korean War, he, he obviously he came back and he played seven more seasons. But he, um, he won awards there too. He won um the Pres- Presidential Medal of Freedom, three Air Medals for Aerial Flight Operations, uh, Navy Unit Commendation, American and Asian Pacific Campaign Medal. World War II Victory Medal, National Defense Service Medal, and like just so much more. <laughs> So, I mean, this guy got just, that. Just, just, every, just every, everything you touched was gold, huh? Right? <laughs> Dude, just success after success. And I, I I, believe there's like a story about a plane getting shot down and surviving that. Yeah, like, yeah just I think, wild. I think Ricardo actually posted about that a few weeks yeah, back. Yeah. Last week or two weeks ago. Yeah, it's just wild. How to think of that. And, and it's just, yeah, man, like just to be able to like come back and whoop some ass in baseball. It's just like, That's crazy, dude. Yeah. crazy yeah so just uh to reference another uh mlb article uh thomas harrigan uh he referenced uh uh formula by bill james that kind of calculated what kind of numbers he would have put up had he not missed those what was it i think five years in total uh mm-hmm. he would have had over 3400 hits only eight people have reached them that amount over 660 home runs uh six people have reached that over 2400 rbis nobody has reached that over 2,600 walks, nobody has reached that. Wow. And he, he would have reached uh, base 6,000 times, and nobody, nobody ever reached that number. And uh, uh, and and not not to mention, not to mention that. So when when he went away this first time, it was uh, his age 24 to 26 season. Yeah, so the prime, 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 time, prime, prime, time, prime, yeah. prime. Nice. And he played at Fenway as a lefty. Exactly. <laughs> another, like, another. Oh, oh that's not a great place to hit. Like for a lefty i mean you can still yeah. pepper it off that wall and he was a complete hitter obviously right. but like imagine well yankee stadium back then wasn't that great either but at least he had the short like if he had a short right field porch i mean imagine that okay. i feel like fenway made him more of a complete hitter though yeah he was probably oh, that's peppering that point. wall that's you such know? a good point you play somewhere long enough like i think about that like jeter with yankee stadium Think yeah. about all the times he was inside outing balls inside that 314 down the right field line, you know? Yeah. There's yeah. not really a whole lot of ballparks you could have done that with, but you just play there your entire career. You learn how to excel there. That's yeah, true. And, That's true. And I, I also that think I think that also speaks volumes to how talented that individual may be, or any individual that adjusts to his ballpark like that. Cause it just shows like um his ability, you know, to like adjust, like right. to make it happen in that specific yeah. place. Yeah. Yeah, wow. for sure, dude. For sure. And it's it's crazy <clears throat> to have those numbers and still be underrated. Yeah. yeah. Is underrated, undervalued. Is those t- yeah. Sorry about that. Go ahead. No, no, just underrated, yeah. undervalued, man. Like, yeah. Just, and I like, like yep. brought up two, only two MVPs, bro. Like, he was undervalued, underrated back then, and still man. to this day, at least now we have a bunch more stats. Like, they didn't have OPS and all that back yeah. then so at least we get a bigger picture of his greatness than they did back then like if these mm. kind of stats existed back then they would be completely undeniable i want to go look oh. at this one where he hit 406 and lost uh <laughs> and lost. yeah let's see what i mean dude he dimaggio was no slouch that year 
but his numbers were better. Literally, literally, his OPS was like over 200 points higher. Yeah. That would, like, you know, that's a lot, but they didn't have that back then. I doubt they even had, dude, did they, did they use slugging percentage back I freaking 1930? Yeah, you know I what I mean? Think so. yeah, I, I don't even, yeah, they probably didn't even use on base percentage. Bro, they probably had the long hand that crap yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, exactly. Uh, they didn't have no Excel, uh, Excel spreadsheets trying to, <laughs> trying right? to figure that shit out. Oh my God, that's too funny. You're right. Damn. <laughs> wild man wild just greatness so it's kind of cool i'm glad you guys mentioned this because this is the first time in a while that i've taken a good look at his numbers because whenever i want to look at video game numbers i look at bonds but this is basically the same thing yeah yeah kevin and i have a good time looking at bonds numbers man Those oh. are just wild bro <laughs> they're not even real dude they're not even real <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> You can get lost in that. It's crazy. You can, bro. You can get absolutely lost in the sauce. I'm kind of getting lost here. I'm just looking at all these bold numbers, and I've never mm. seen that many outside of Barry Lamar Bonds. That's exactly yeah. what I was going to say. The, the only one I've seen with more uh, more uh, bold numbers is uh, this Barry Bonds' page. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's wild, dude. Wild. Yeah. Still played 19 years, which is insane. Yeah, on top of that. One one more nugget for you guys before we jump into the next, uh, next segment here. Uh, Never won a World Series, so that, that that's probably a shame on his career. But yeah. uh, so the, he lost in the World Series in '46 when he came back. But uh, probably probably wouldn't have changed the course of history if he didn't miss the, those three years, right? Yeah, no maybe, kidding. Maybe, that's maybe the only curse, year. Maybe the curse. Maybe the curse changes. Yeah. Well, Dude. who'd they play that year? Uh, oof, good question. The Indians St. or they? I know the Indians. St. Won Louis. St. Louis. Oh, St. Louis. St. Louis. Okay. Yeah, yeah, St. Louis. Seven game series. St. Louis. Louis. Dude, he. He literally only went to the postseason one year. Yeah. I'm getting trout vibes right now, bro. <laughs> oh, dude. Like, that's that's wild. OPS. Dude, that's crazy. That's OPS is 533. That's a travesty, bro. It is. You're right. That's the only. I mean, that's not really his fault, right? Like, yeah, I mean, yeah, he, nah, but, nah. 344 as, for his career. So, but that's just wild to think about. Oh my God! No home runs, dude. He's literally he didn't have a single extra base hit. He just had five singles. Damn! Wow! Wow! Was hey, he was probably just putting the ball in contact, I mean, just trying to get on for it too. Right, for sure. Man, that's just crazy. Never really heard that discussed. Yeah, yeah. I, I just, I literally just picked it up right now. I saw it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's, wow. let's get into this next one. Uh, Ryan Howard is from uh, February 21st, 2008. Ryan Howard wins his salary arbitration case against the Phillies. Uh, he receives a 10, $10 million salary for the upcoming season. Uh, the Phillies had offered $7 million, And the Phillies actually hadn't lost an arbitration case since 2001. So shout out to Howard for, for breaking that streak. Uh, and it, check, check this, these numbers out. Uh, in 2007, uh, he earned $900,000. Uh, 2006, his MVP season, he earned 355k. Damn. In 2005, his rookie season, he earned 316k. So, uh, <sighs> what a shame to the Phillies for trying to lowball him for the for those seven million dollars, bro. Oh like, my uh, gosh! I mean, rookie of the year, MVP start to the career, by the way. Exactly. Like, what? What? What more do you have to do to to uh, to make yourself, uh, you know, worth 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 it? I know yeah, it's just, like, it's just wild because like he got blocked by Tony. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's just so a shame yeah. that he didn't get a chance like with somebody else earlier. But you can't control that. You're cattle. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, oh my gosh, I'm just I'm just looking at these numbers, dude. Fifty eight and one forty nine. What well, you know? The wildest thing to me is his best year ever. His MVP year, right? Oh six. Yeah. I think it's insane to think that he struck out. 181 times and still hit 313. Yeah, yeah that's pretty that's wild. Would have true, yeah. yeah that's, what? Almost two, that's almost 200 strikeouts, yeah. Dude, what? Who does that? That's like unheard of. What? Yeah, you're right. I'm, I'm trying to think of a comparable hitter. Like, no. Huh? He never did it again. You either do one or you do the other. You like, you don't. <laughs> you don't strike out and break. Yeah, yeah, exactly, real, bro. It's like it's like one or the other. Usually, yeah, that's wild, man. Like, dude, he was the Ryan Howard era was one of the most exciting times this millennium for baseball. Yeah, it was. Nah. 
Yeah, he, he, he truly. Oh, go ahead, Kevin. Sorry about that. No, I'm 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 glad you mentioned that because I think you commented that on on the IG post and and honestly it it took me back because uh that 2008 he came out on the show in the show cover 2008 right yep and that was the first uh that so I I the first show experience I had was on the PSP nice. so the two, 2008 was the first time I bought a PS2 and that was the first game I I actually bought on my own so that, that nice. Was, uh, that was that that one hit home, you know. So Ryan, oh, Ryan for Howard sure. was always Ryan Howard was always a a big time a big time favorite on on my end. He was so clutch too, dude. He was so clutch. Oh he my was, god, man, the the bat speed, bro. I I couldn't get over it. And then and then I think he was the uh, fastest to one hundred home runs, the fastest yep. to two hundred home runs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so this, all yeah. those thou- tens of thousands of of hitters, right? It, well, I think it's like there's been like twenty thousand big leaguers, something like that. So I would imagine, well, probably more pitchers and hitters, but yeah. all these thousands and thousands of hitters and Ryan Howard was the quickest. That yeah. tells you, that tells and, you and how elite crazy? he was. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Dude, to me, he was must-see TV anytime he was He up. really was. Yeah. yeah, he was. Um, And then, uh, I mean, like you guys just said, he, he emerged as like a face of baseball. He really was. Um, He, he won the 08 World Series. Uh, he came out on the show. Um, and he even came out on the office. That's how like yeah. how a big impact he was. You know, in 2013, he came out in an episode called Promos, and it was a hilarious episode. It's in the later stages of that of that series. That if you haven't watched The Office, you should go watch it. I don't know what your thoughts are or about The Office playing. Uh, it's it's not really my humor. I I caught okay. some of it with my wife. I'm not. Okay. I'll, I'll put it this. It's I'm not a big NBC guy. Oh, like, okay. okay. This style. I think it's a well done, like, you know, like Parks and Rec, The Office. I'm pretty sure it was on NBC, right? It had to be. Yeah, I had no idea. We, 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 we saw it on the Netflix. Okay, okay, got you. So, like, it's not really my kind of comp, like, my style comedy, but it's obviously extremely well done, and people love it for a reason. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, um, as Kevin said, in 07, he won his arbitration case. He made his way into the league in 04. So from 04, 04 to 07, he slugged 286 home runs. Like Kevin said, the fastest ever to 100 home run mark. Uh, 151 OPS plus, um, OPS 1, 1.007. And his Oof. batting average, like uh, Flank said, you don't rank and slug. He, he hit a two for a 291 batting average. So That's insane, dude. All <laughs> those wild. strikeouts. Just, just in that little uh, little bundle, like you guys said, um, and I have one last thing from a STL Mag written in May of 2008. Uh, it's an article quoting Reggie Jackson um, talking about Howard, saying, "And Reggie Jackson said this. He said, I would trade my I would um, trade my past for his future. And he's going to hit a lot of home runs, you know. So basically, what that what he's trying to say with that is that Brian Howard's not Brian Brian Howard's future was just." It was so filled with bright lights, you know. Like, yeah. You know, yeah those damn injuries. Oh, that that Achilles, Achilles injury, bro. That, yep. that Never the same. Achilles, yeah. Never the same. Yeah, dude. He was just so yeah. dominant, dude. Yeah. Man. So he, dominant. That that period, and, that, that five year period. And if I'm not mistaken, that Achilles went out when they got eliminated, right? That one. It was, it was the last, the last, last out. out. It was like, I remember was it, seeing that. Was it, the world, was was it the World about. Series or was it the NLCS? Nah, bro. Mm. Ooh, I'm going to have to type that one. Let's see. Look, look it up. Look it up. Yeah, let's see. Because I, I just remember seeing it from the corner of my eye and obviously they catch the, I think it was against the Cardinals, bro, if I'm not mistaken. So then, the NLCS. NLCS. Yep, it was. It was. It was the Cardinals. Yep. Oh, okay. Good call. It was the division know. series. It was the division oh, series yes, game against the yes. Cardinals. Wow. In yeah, what, 2011. Wow. What a shame. Yeah. And then he was never really the same after that. If you actually go back and look, he never hit, dude, he never hit uh, more than 25 homers a year after that. And, it, and this also, um, it kind of goes to show how like unforgiving this game can be. Like, Ooh, yes, he, he was at the top of the, of the, you yeah, know, at the top, top of the world, of the, bro. The world and, and you know, just chewed him up at the end and spit him out. Like, Dude, just, it really did. It's just uh, man, remember he Ryan tried to come Howard, back man. with the with the uh, Rockies. He tried yeah, to come Rockies, back with the Rockies. The last contract he signed, yeah, yeah. And I was like, dude, I would love to see him just hit some old man yeah. nukes at Coors. Oh, like, you're uh, right, bro. You know, 
imagine, imagine dude but just never got the opportunity i think he ended up dealing with injuries then i mean yeah like kind of like what they're talking about with judge big guys don't typically age that well you know unfortunately i'd, I'd love to see you know especially like judge break that you know like stop that but yeah it's it came the ryan howard the best way ryan howard the best way i can describe his, that his career is that it got started too late and ended too yeah. early yeah mm -hmm. That's such a great way to put it. That's, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, exactly. Otherwise, he's in the hall without a doubt within the first oh, yeah. two years. Mm -hmm. You know, he's in the hall of very good, yeah. but you know, just short of a complete career that would put him in the hall of fame. I mean, it's wild. He was only, I mean, it's three more times than us, but he's only a three time all star. How? Yeah. How? Yeah. He had. He had over a hundred RBIs. One, two, three, four, five, six straight years, dude. What? What? Yeah, he should, he should have been. Yeah. He should have had that first base position locked up. For well, like, they had. Like, there's Albert. Oh, that's true. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. About, he was doing okay. <laughs> he was doing okay, and they were winning. He's pretty but like, good with that. Albert was a right, beast, bro. Scary. Like, I'm yeah. just looking. Like, how does a guy with 48 pumps and 146 RBIs not an All Star? In the yeah. year before, 47 homers, 136 RBIs, not an all star. What? You, you want to know? You want to know my favorite number about that 2008 season? What's that? Uh, 162 games played. Dude, that's, that's right. wild. That's, that's wild. Right. That's anytime you see a bold under games played, dude. Whoo! For sure, bro. Right? Especially yeah, nowadays, grind, man. Sure. Especially nowadays, we're not going to see that. No, it like honestly, it doesn't make sense to. It really doesn't. Like so, it's it doesn't. It. It's more of like a I'm not even gonna say it's an ego thing, but it kind of is. Like you can, and I, I mean this like you can absolutely produce better if you take your 162 and turn it into like 155. Mm -hmm. You could probably end up having a better year. Obviously, yeah. there's value in being out on the field. But if you take a little bit of rest here and there, dude, it's so many games. Oh, if you yeah. take it's a little incredible. rest yeah. here and there, you might get like you're probably going to feel a little bit better and contribute more. That's that's kind mm -hmm. of Definitely. the angle at, on it. But still doing yeah. one six playing one sixty two, that's unheard of. Like there's no need for it. But the fact that somebody act like especially hit his size did it yeah. in the yeah. National League, whoo, that's insane, yeah. bro. I'm just gonna do that exactly. <laughs> Kudos, kudos that's so that's such a great point bro in the national league before the the dh for any younger yeah. young, any younger people watching and, I'm, and while we're on that subject any young people that are like are asking like who he is please just go with them up like do, just kick back a little bit and watch some highlights and use him in the show he's they exactly. added him last year he's back okay. use him in the show oh my god the sweat <laughs> dude the swag the way he dropped the bat, his pimp jobs were yeah. absolute freaking best. Yeah. And this was an era to where the only people allowed to pimp a homer were in the 50 home run club. Honestly, yeah. they still got mad when Prince Fielder pimped home runs. <laughs> yeah, bro, they were hating on Fielder. They were and those, hating. And those were moonshots, man. Those are moonshots, dude. R Ryan Howard, you talk about hand speed. The way he was able to go oppo taco, no problem. Oh, yeah. Lefty, lefty, it didn't matter, dude. He was mm -hmm. built literally built different. <laughs> and, facts, yeah. Damn. So that, yeah. That, that, that takes us into the, the next segment. We're gonna be talking about the show, uh MLB 23, the show. Uh Yo. so we got we got Chaz uh Jazz Chisholm on the cover, excuse me, and we got Derek Jeter on the collector's edition, and uh, a couple a couple of new things on this year's uh this year's game. They're gonna have the Negro Leagues. I'm um, pretty sure yeah. you guys saw that. That's pretty dope. Uh, so that first time, bro. Yeah. the first About episode, time. exactly the first episode I saw. They're gonna include uh Satchel Paige, Jackie Robinson, Rube Foster, Hilton Smith, Hank Thompson, uh, John Donaldson, Martin Digo, and Buck O'Neill. Yeah. And, uh, another thing that I thought was pretty cool that they're gonna have uh they're gonna include a narration from the Negro League Baseball uh, Museum. Uh, the president Bob Kendrick is going to be uh, narrating some of their storylines, so that, I think that's pretty cool feature they're going to be including this year. Big time! It's about it, it's about time. It's like it's the significance can't be stated enough, dude. Exactly. The Negro Leagues have made it into yeah. mm -hmm. a video game that's like unheard of, 
And now we get to learn about all of these legends whose careers were just buried, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And we're finally, they're finally going to be able to play in integrated games. Yeah, yeah. Like, exactly. time, man. That's that, that's a thing that like that that that's insane, bro. These guys, the power of technology, yeah. Right? They're yeah. finally gonna be able to play in integrated games. <laughs> like that's why. Wild. wild, man. <laughs> wild. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it also took them long enough too to recognize the Negro League stats as legit stats, you know. It, right. I think that, that, I think that happened like, that like a couple of years ago. I wouldn't yeah, say, I very say recent. Two, three, two, three years ago. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. it was. I mean, better late yeah. than never, right? Yeah. No, yeah, that's very true. Like Blank said, um, finally, man, we got to pay homage to to some of the to some of those legends, some of those OGs, and learn about their stories and what they went through, because. Um, there's for sure they had their fair share of talent right and i got it my uh great uncle actually played in the negro leagues his name's albert overton he actually has a uh baseball reference albert overton yeah yeah let's yeah dude it's pretty it's pretty wild and like the gap in his career is insane so he played in 1932 then 1937 and then 1944 after the war oh shit isn't that wild now, now, you don't mind me asking, did you get to meet him, like, in person? No, no. he passed. Yeah, he passed back in, like, if I did, I was an infant because he passed the year I was born. So I don't really oh, okay. remember it. They Obviously, I they said I did, but I was, like, two, three months old. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's so cool. That's crazy. Man. Isn't that cool? Yeah. That's it really crazy. Is. Yeah, man. I haven't really, like, talked about it much, but now it's kind of relevant. How, how did it feel when cool, you found man. that out? Oh, dude, like it's and like I I always kind of like, you know, my parents had kind of talked about it and mentioned it and stuff. But like I had never really looked it up before, you know, and so I saw that I was like, oh, my gosh, that's right. That's so cool. You know, uh, yeah. Damn. so um, out of um, a handful of those players, if you have the list in front of you playing, who are you most excited to use for and I'll be the show from the Negro Leagues? Satchel Page, he's gonna be yeah, nasty, yeah. bro. He's gonna be nasty. <laughs> he was so dominant, and, and you like, know he was. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Sorry no, about you're that. just no. He was he was just nasty, and I just want to use him, man. Like I just want to carve with him, you know. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I wonder what um, kind of pitches he's gonna have. He's probably gonna have like a good a good five six uh repertoire, right? Uh, funky delivery. Least, right? Yeah, yeah you no, know yeah. he's gonna have something funky like some you know, to it, yeah. hiding the ball real well and stuff. So yeah, I can't wait, bro. That's kind of that's the one I'm looking forward to the most. That's what's up. Uh, a couple more things I saw. The they did a couple changes to the shifts. They don't have no more extreme left and extreme right shifts. So Thank goodness. Uh, yeah. yeah, shout out to that. Right. Yeah, they finally. Uh, I mean, some of the rules uh, they're starting to line up with uh major league baseball so now they have the uh universal dh that's right and have yeah. it in well especially in diamond dynasty but dude i think that's the biggest one because dude yeah. pitcher, should, pitcher shouldn't hit exactly. unless your name is shohei otani yeah like yeah. you have no reason to hit exactly it's pitcher, that's gonna, that's, just, gonna waste. Get, just gonna get yourself hurt out there man dude it's like <sighs> I'm, I'm like, you, you don't pay money to go see the kicker play quarterback, do you? <laughs> Imagine if the kicker played that's quarterback. It. That's uh, a good, uh, it's good analogy. Right? <laughs> yeah, like once a drive, the kicker or the punter or something I don't know, or the I'm, placeholder. I'm, I'm, on third down, we're going to bring out the kicker to, to throw. <laughs> yeah, come out in the that. wildcat. Like, like, you know, I think it kind of so, like it's not a good representation of the game. And people are like, oh, well, kids, guys, jobs and this kind of ball. I'm like, dude, if the only way that you're in like if the only reason you're on a team especially as a position player <laughs> yeah. is because you're a double switch guy and because the pitcher's hitting and all that then dude get better yeah, like exactly. honestly that's not a like yes you're a big leaguer but that's not baseball dude it be yeah baseball is kind of a sport where people like doing it because it's the way things have been but uh like you know the game is kind of stood in its own way when it comes to progressing Exactly. And they finally got something right with the universal DH. Honestly, yeah. like it's so now that it's in the show, like, dude, it just means more offense. And that's, yeah. that's what sells no matter what the it sport, does. offense sells. People don't pay yeah. to see defense. Offense puts butts in seats. So, yeah. Yeah. And like, I mean, I think the defense is, um, 
usually more appreciated by the the, the diehard fans, you know, the ones that are watching it day in, day out. Yeah, they'll be there anyways. That. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we we love a one zero game with pitchers duel, you know, just as much as the next baseball uh, hard yeah. hard uh, you know right. a diehard baseball fan. But like Plank said, the 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 home run sells. Uh, you know, chicks dig the like, the long ball. Right. However you want to put it, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. On top of that, bro, like um, there's the purists always like not always, but like there's they, there's people complaining about the changes, but like. If you even go back to the 1800s, the sport is always changing. It's always, always adjusting. It's always making different rule changes so that it's more <laughs> enjoyable. So it's just more up to date. And it's something yeah. that's never going to happen. The only thing that's um, for sure is change in anything, you know, like, like that's just what it and, is. And one, one thing I heard uh, or this week I heard on the radio is uh, not, stop looking at it as change. Look at it as it evolving, you know, it's yep. growing. Max, you know, exactly. bro. It's coming into a better thing, you know? Yep. They trimmed the fat too. The pitch clock trimmed the fat. Yeah. 100% mm-hmm. it did. And people were like, oh, this isn't uh, this isn't baseball. I'm like, dude, they've been using that in the minor leagues for like a while now. Yeah, that's what I was reading. Right. And so they added it when I was like, they added a pitch clock when I was like five years into my career. And that's okay. kind of a big change. Dude, yeah. I never had one issue with that. Even as <laughs> when I was pitching, I never had one issue with it. So you're seeing... The most of the most of the issues are going to be with veteran hitters. I don't think necessarily pitchers. You're going to see the issue with hitters because they're so locked into their routine. You're That's right. why Machado was the first one to get popped for it. Yeah. You know, and even then, it wasn't that big a deal. He still got a hit. Started 0-1, <laughs> yeah. still got a knock. <laughs> so it's like true. whatever it. And uh, I don't know if you guys saw the average game. So far in spring training yeah. is down over 20 minutes. It's like 23 20, minutes now. 22, 22, 22 minutes. Or so. yeah. 22 minutes. So that, that's a that's big great. deal, dude. That's yeah. a big deal. Spring training games take forever, anyways. Yeah. So, like, dude, like it's still it's still baseball. Now it just puts a little bit more sense of urgency. There's nothing wrong yeah. with that. No, and I heard to follow up on that, I heard something else that so in a 162 game season, if you knock off 20, 20 minutes off each game you get like two entire days back in your life that you're not wasting at a ballpark <laughs> watching somebody do this to a ball or walk around the <laughs> behind the mound. So, you know, it's wild. You can use those two and a half days to, you know, go do nothing or do something else, you know? So, right. And it's all like, we're getting, all we're getting is time back. So that's all no you're getting is that. time. Facts, dude. Facts. It's so true because like football can afford to have all the dead time with, uh, with you like, dude, if you ever go to an NFL game, personally, I think they're boring. There's so much dead time in between plays and it's, stuff. I've heard better, about that. It's better seen on TV. That's, way that's better. It's a better way better experience, right? Yeah. Way better. But like they play once a week. It's basically America's church now. Right. So mm-hmm. they can get away with being boring in person uh, because it just doesn't happen every day. If football, yeah. they played like, dude, if they played every day, they, I guarantee you, people would get bored of these games just because of how many they would play. That's kind of what baseball is dealing with. Like they play so many games that you got to trim this fat. And the fact is, mm-hmm. like it's you just found out it's two days you get back. That's insane, <laughs> insane. Yeah. It's back for the players on dead time. <laughs> yeah, now everybody, dude. And don't you think it creates a better product when there's yeah. less dead time? No, exactly. And and to get back to a point you made earlier uh, about, you know, uh, getting guys off their feet, you know, less games played, you know, less less time spent out on the field, you know, right. less time on their feet, you better, more time to, to recover and, and all that good stuff, you know? Facts, dude. Absolutely. Especially but, uh, during those hot summer months. Imagine dude. That. Um, Especially in some of those uh, southern, eastern part of the, the country, man. It, yeah. it gets muggy and nasty hot out there, man. Right. Yeah, so, I think it just creates a better product. And like, <laughs> yeah, for sure. And the funny thing is like talking about MLB the show, it's already had the games already had, especially online, a built-in like pitch clock. So they haven't even had the it's I don't think that they've changed it. They have and even in the test, they didn't have okay. to change anything because I think it's already like, dude, it's something like eight seconds or whatever. That's how long you have to like select your pitch or auto pitches you. Okay. So it's like okay. built into that game, which is kind <laughs> so of fun. already there. <laughs> yeah, it's already there. That's cool. That's what's up. Yeah. So let's get into this last portion, man. Let's keep uh let's focus on to you, man. Let's turn it over to you. Let's let's see uh let's see what you can bless us with. Oh snap. <laughs> <laughs> so um 
one of the first things we want to know about you, man, is what are some <laughs> of like your earliest memories of baseball, whether it be like T-ball, um, maybe playing with some of your friends growing up, like just some of your earliest memories of baseball, man. Okay. So my, my baseball, um, especially past and like I lineage, absolutely. You know, have, being a son of a big league all-star, like it's, I've been around baseball. It's not a sport. It's our family job, honestly. So, you know, it is, it, it, it is. And, you know, we would travel around with my pops and then with my brother, him having his career and everything. So I got to be around a lot of just elite, elite baseball from when I, whenever I was in diapers. So I think, I think the coolest thing now that I can appreciate is like, I remember my T-ball days and just, I was blessed to have the opportunity to play the game from T-ball all the way up until the highest level. And like, let's be real, dude. It's not even the same. What's the higher, like, it's not even the same. It's almost like what the higher you go, the more it's just like ballet and, and all that, you know, everything is just has a flow to it. Like, dude, you hit a ground ball to an infielder, it's an out. It's not like, you know what I mean? It's not like, like some, I, I might make it, right? <laughs> yeah, no, like you're out. Like you hit a ball to the, you hit a ball that gets to the wall, you can just jog into second, you know? It's a lot different than whenever like you're a kid and you have that youthful, just hopefulness. And I think that's the best part about baseball, especially when you're an amateur, is that there's just like this hope, you know? It's like, dude, I hope I get a hit this time. I hope I get a hit this time. <laughs> You know, I, I right. honestly, I don't even like, that's what I remember the most, like from my early days playing the game, it's just the mentality is completely different. It's just like this youthful ju jubilance around playing the sport. Right. And then the older you get and the more serious you have to take it, like, you know, the higher you get, you have to take it more seriously, especially when it's your op occupation. Right. Then it's just, a it becomes more about the process instead of the result, you know? Yeah, of wow. course, because if, if you take care of the process, the result will be there at the end of the day, right? Bingo. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, but like when you're a kid, dude, you're just hoping to, it's like, oh, I hope I get a hit. I hope I get a hit. Yeah. That's kind of like, dude, those are what my mem like, those are some of my best memories of just being that giddy kid up in the box. Because you right. kind of like, dude, you lose that. You lose that over the over time, dude. You, I played yeah. the game from eight nonstop. I played baseball from age three to 30, you know? That's so that. much, so much baseball, you know, and I just, I look at, you know, being removed from like almost five years now from the game. I'm just more grateful for every step of the way. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, uh, that's good that you talk about the journey. So uh, how would you describe your professional, your professional journey? Like what, what were the, Whew, man, it was wild, bro. So I got, so fun fact, I got drafted twice in the top nine rounds as a teenager. Oh, wow. I saw that. Yeah, it's kind of wild. So like, what is it, ninth round out of high school, when I was 17, and then I went to JUCO for two years, and then I moved up 30 picks exactly to the eighth round. Uh, was that, and I, sorry, sorry to cut you off, but was it a hard did. choice to go back to college? Oh, no, no, no. So like, okay, so whenever I got drafted, so I got drafted out of high school, and then it wasn't really that difficult because it was the Mets at the time and their GM was Omar Minaya and he was super right. crooked, like super crooked, right, dude. This, right. Like, dude, I was 17 and he was trying to call. I was a Boris guy at the time. Well, I was okay. with Sosnick and Cobb, but then <laughs> this is kind of funny. So I don't know if you know the, the, the agent, Matt Sosnick, I was with him, Sosnick and Cobb sports. I was with them. They were my advisor. Cause I was still a, an amateur dude. This guy was uh, he, he represented me. Cause he was trying to poach my brother from Boris. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> it, so dude, it got crooked, bro. It got so crooked. He was like, dude, even if the Mets don't give you the figure that you want, we'll cover the rest. That's what he said. What the, damn. Him, him, I'm like, uh, no. And then the guy, <laughs> and then the guy called my dad a fucking pussy. What? Wow. Oh, yeah. Wow. yeah, dude. So then he got fired and then Boris took me on probably as a favor to my brother, but then that was a whole thing. And then Omar Minaya, the GM of the Mets at the time, he didn't want to deal with Scott freaking Boris. So he called me directly and I'm like, dude, you're not, you're, it's literally illegal. I'm not even 18 yet. You can't talk to me. I was like, I can't, like, I can't sign with you guys. You're literally breaking the rules before I've even put pen to paper. And so, wow. and 
you know, it's kind of crazy, dude. Like, it's nuts. He was like, oh, you know, Delgado's getting older and we can see you playing first base in the future for us. I'm like, dude, you just broke, like, you literally just committed a huge violation. Like, I can't sign with you guys. So it made the decision really easy. I wanted to sign, dude. It's a freaking Mets. It was sick. Yeah. The Mets in 06, dude, they were the hot yeah. team in New yeah. York. It wasn't the Yankees. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they, had Reyes. they had Reyes. Yeah. David Wright. Right. Yeah. yeah. Delgado. Like, yeah. dude, yeah. Beltron, too, I think, already on. Huh? Dude, yeah. Like, they were stacked, bro. That's and right. So, that's right. Yeah. And so it made the decision really easy. They, they made it for me. Yeah, pretty much. You know? And he so <laughs> he did. He did, dude. He did. He made, he made that wow. decision for me by literally just going around my advisor slash agent. And then I went to school. So I went, the whole thing is like, dude, I went, you know, junior college, you can get drafted each year. Okay. I went from ninth round to undrafted to eighth round. That mm. was my trajectory. So by the time <laughs> I get to my sophomore year of JUCO, I'm like, dude, I just went undrafted. I don't know what I'm going to do. The only school that was really recruiting me was Jackson state. And I'm like, Dude, I'm not gonna go play in the SWAC. No, like no disrespect to that conference, but that's not a it's not like I I wanted to play in a like a big, big conference, right? Yeah, yeah, and, I, of course. and I really didn't want to go play baseball at an HBCU. Like uh, it it like baseball, we're not there yet. We haven't had the baseball equivalent to a coach prime that's leveled the playing field. We haven't, right? Right. You've had, you've had your stars, like you've had Ricky Weeks that played at what Southern. But like you don't really have a bunch. It's not an easy. It's not a super easy path to get to the next level. And so I was, man, I had no expectations. Ended up getting drafted eighth round. Never even met the A's. The first time I ever met the scout, he showed up at my house with a contract. <laughs> oh shit! So it was like a no pressure kind of thing, dude. I went into it. I went into my sophomore year of college. I'm like, all right, this is probably gonna be my last year of baseball. So I just had fun with it, man. There you go. You know. And so it was kind of nice to to get that kind of perspective, take all the pressure off, and then just kept it that way my entire career, honestly. Like going uh signing with the A's. Why did it have to be the A's? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they were so cheap, bro. It was yeah, so that's, bad. That's what I was gonna say. Is there probably there's probably isn't the, the cheapest, uh, another cheaper team in the league. No, they're the worst, bro. We <laughs> literally, i never I was with them for seven seasons. I've, I made it to minor league free agency. I don't know if you guys are familiar with how hard that is to do. It no. is. It might be the hardest thing in all of baseball to make it to your minor league free agency with the team that drafted you and like that you signed with initially as an amateur. Cause you have to play seven seasons without getting called up, added to the 40 man or traded or released. That is so hard because wow. <laughs> literally like, dude, every year it would be like 10 guys from your draft class would just fall off. And yeah. then it got to the point where it was literally the longest tenured guys in the entire organization was Sean Doolittle. And then me, Damn. <laughs> that's Damn. crazy, bro. That's, that's crazy. Wild. It was wild. But like, dude, they were so cheap. Seven seasons. I was with them. I never got a hoodie. What? No I way. Never got a, what? I swear to God. <laughs> no. I never got a hoodie. Not a, I didn't get a hoodie. Dude, let me show you what they gave me. Let me show you what they gave me when I signed. I have it right here. I have to get it out of this little thing. I'll, let me show you. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> That's all bad, huh? <laughs> That's messed up, bro. Even, even my company gave me a jacket, bro. And I, <laughs> they're not a professional baseball team. What the fuck am I going to do with this? <laughs> what am I going to do with this fucking thing, dude? What am I going to do with the bullpen jacket, bro? That's literally all they gave you. All they gave me when I signed. And I'm saying, it's better, I guess, better than nothing. But, dude, what the hell am I going to do with an A's bullpen jacket? That's all bad. Like, you can't, what am I going to do with that, bro? Go outside when it's cold and raining? And like, like, what? Dude, we didn't even get, I didn't even get a, Actually, I did get a duffel bag because I had to buy it. But I don't know if you guys uh, heard about this. They tried to, well, they didn't try. They took it back. I bought the duffel bag and they still took it back. I had to go into the office. I swear to God. So they would loan out duffel bags. Okay. Wow. (laughs) 
you didn't get to keep it. They would give you at the last day of either spring training or, or instructional league, wherever you were, or like whatever affiliate you were in at the end, they would give you a freaking trash bag and not even a black one, a clear one. Oh, like if you're getting leased. Oh, man. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let go like, from they, that's how you would oh, take your man. stuff home unless you bought Why? a duffel bag. So I was like, I respect myself and my career way too much to put my stuff in a freaking trash bag. Yeah, that's, that's dirty, man. That's just... So bad, dude. So bad. So I was like, so I, I bought this duffel bag and these fools still, I go back to my locker after like eating or something or coming off of the field, dude, duffel bag is gone. And there's a trash bag in its place. No, I, dude. I grabbed that thing and stormed full uniform, stormed directly into Ted Polakowski's office. He was the head minor league coordinator. Ted Mart is what we called him. Cause if you wanted anything good, you had to buy it. So it was called Ted Mart. <laughs> like, like Walmart. <laughs> it literally had, it literally had a catalog. Oh man. So bad. Wow. And I walked in his office. I'm like, where's my duffel bag? He goes, Oh, we loaned those out. I go, no, I bought that from you. And he's like, gave me trouble. I'm like, give me my duffel bag right now. Like, dude, I let it eat. It was funny, but that's how cheap they were. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. I, it's bad. Man. I know they're cutting corners, but they, to take it to that level is uh, that's, that's kind of crazy, man. To sell it and take it back, bro. Sell it and take it back, and then they would like cheap out so bad on our food that every spring training you would get food poisoning. So, oh. so like, dude, we knew don't ever eat the fruit, ever. If they have fruit, don't ever eat it. And you get guys that come in and start crushing the honeydew. Mm. <laughs> no Damn. yes dude that's how cheap I, they were food poisoning cheap that's terrible man does it surprise you though with the state of that organization now no, they were at least no. winning i mean yeah you're right you're right but they don't yeah, win I would, anymore I would, I would think i would think mlb would have some kind of like threshold that each team has to you know supply their their minor league players or but yeah, I guess I guess not, right? Dude, not even the big leagues like with the A's are just so cheap, bro. It it like laughably bad. I and the people who get it the worst are the fans. Yeah, that's yeah. terrible. But thankfully for me, man, I was able to <clears throat> I was able to level up with the two other organizations that I got to play with. So whether it be the the Rockies, that's a huge upgrade in every way. It's not like they know how to win, but at least like they're a real team. <laughs> and then and then the Red Sox, like. Dude, they're one of the best sports franchises in the entire universe. So that was right. pretty sick to be a part of that. Damn. So um, one of the next questions we have, um, you already, I, I was going to ask what was one of the hardest parts, but you already got that. So um, if you can. Being with, uh, being with the A's was the hardest part. <laughs> <laughs> that whole thing. Uh, the whole uh, thing. So uh, maybe we can switch over to maybe some of those pros that you experienced with the Rockies or with the Red Sox. Um, just some cool, cool vibes that you got there. Like any cool things that you experienced? Oh, absolutely. So the coolest thing by far was with the Rockies and they were the only team I was with that did this. And most teams don't, uh, but they have the major league team and then the minor league guys uh, share a bunch of the same facilities instead of splitting it off. So you'd see big leaguers like you'd see too low in the weight room, you know, or you could or like see them, see them in the cafeteria. I'd be eating, eating at the cafeteria with like Arnado, you know, That's like uh, and it, you miss out on like, dude, there is so much value in being around people that have been there and done that. Right. Yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. just getting exactly. FaceTime, rubbing shoulders with them and you get robbed of that. Like the A's, bro, the minor leagues and the big leagues. They were literally like three miles, no, maybe even further apart, like three or four miles apart down the road. Like, wow. if, yeah, if you like it, it was so it was huge. Like it wasn't even like you were in the, on the, in the same organization. Like you almost never saw those guys. That's and crazy. then, you know, but like being with the Rockies, being able to rub shoulders with those guys, like that was really cool. Cause that was my first year outside of Oakland. Like that was our first experience outside of the A's. And then Finally, for me, without a doubt, the highest of the highs for me was after 10 years, literally 10 years, year 10, right? I finally got a big league invite to spring training. Uh, oh. it, 
yeah, dude, drafted like, well, shoot, 12 years after the first time I got drafted, but uh, literally a decade after I got drafted, I went to my first and only big league camp it was in 18. It ended up being the Red Sox. They won the World Series that year. So for two seconds, I was with the uh, I was with the World Series team, I guess. <laughs> but it was really I funny. So. I was uh, but the outfield at the time was Mookie. Uh, JBJ, Jackie Bradley Jr. and Andrew Benintendi. JD signed about a month into camp. Uh, they also had Rusne Castillo making like 13 million in AAA. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I dude, they even had Bryce Brents who hit like 30 something home runs in AAA the year before, couldn't even get called up. I mean, dude, the outfield was so stacked at the time. And of course, uh, my boy Steve Selsky was on that team as well. And like out of all these outfielders, I was the oldest guy. <laughs> They're the ones with all this big league time and whatnot. And here I am older than them without any big league time. But it was really funny. It's, it wasn't like I was like the wide eyed rookie dude. I grew up around this game. So there was comfort oh, in that, you know, okay, that's good. Yeah, yeah. but it was really funny. Cause like all these guys are younger and they're ahead of me in the depth chart. And I was just like, yeah, I'm probably done. <laughs> and I was. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah, it was cool though, man. You know, honestly, that was that that's another one of the highs. Just being around these young studs. Like, dude, I got to see the envy. Like, I literally got to like my throwing partner was JD. And like I played that's against him a bunch whenever he was coming up with the Astros and I was with the A's because right. we were in the same leagues a bunch. But like, dude, I got to, you know, be in the same group with those guys, especially outfielders, you're always together. Right. Dude, I got to be there all like all day, every day with Mookie and just to see how an MVP operates. And like to be honest, dude, he works hard. He's literally just that good at everything. He literally cool. is, dude. Anything you can think of, he's the best at. Ping pong, yeah, the best. You've seen him bowling. Yeah, I've like, seen that. Yeah, everything, bro. He like everything. But just to be around, like, it, it, it's kind of cool. It's like, oh yeah, this guy's really good. <laughs> yeah, so Kevin and I had a discussion one time. We were at a Dodger game and. Um, we both, I, I'm pretty sure Kevin agrees with me, but we both think he's going to be a Hall of Famer when it's all said and done, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, dude. He's, uh, I think the fact that he's won an MVP, I think he might win another one. If he gets that average up enough, mm -hmm. I think he's going to, and I think obviously, dude, he hit 340 something one year, right? The MVP yeah. year, he hit like 342 or whatever. But like, if he stays healthy, I think him playing second base helps a lot with that. Yeah, and that's with, true. With, with Lux going down, I think that's going to help Mookie a lot, you know? I mean, he does kind of lose some value in not being able to, to gun out runners, but he's that's still true. freaking Mookie bets. Like, he's still going to make web gems here. I mean, he did last year web gems at second base. I, I, dude, he's, I think he's got another MVP in, in the works. Like, watch it be, I think you have three guys that, that could absolutely win one this next year. Machado, Arnado, and Mookie. I think those are my mm -hmm. big three to look out for in the NL and while well, obviously go. kind of goldie, but uh, it's hard to repeat. Yeah. Maybe. I was just going to say Arenado was close last year. So maybe, maybe he'll make the jump up mm -hmm. runner up. Right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So, so yeah, that those are kind of my big, like my, my guys to watch. Cause dude, we're talking, dude, they're still young, man. Like yeah. they're still young. They're like what? Early thirties, early thirties with, yeah. With what? How much? Like ten years in now? That's insane. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's insane. I believe I believe Machado's been playing since nineteen, and yeah. it Dude, feels Ma like he's been around forever. You know. Yep. He is over halfway to a Hall of Fame career. I think personally, he's closer than those uh, than Mookie. Yeah. Yeah. He's been I, I more think, consistent and yeah. stays healthy. I think, I think he will be in the Hall of Fame, Machado, if he Absolutely. stays healthy. Yeah, he has better. to. Yeah. First, first ballot, I think. And now, dude, he's set in San Diego now. <laughs> And oh, universal man. DH, like bro, he can. He's still elite at third base, right? Like he's a platinum Glover at third yeah. still. And then down the road, dude, he can just slide on over to first base. Like he's got yeah. it made. He's got it yeah. made. And that ballpark has gotten a, a lot more hitter friendly. I like he's, dude. I like honestly, like you talk about guys who are going to the hall. Mike Trout's a Hall of Famer right now, okay. but. I think the closest for a position player behind him right now in my eyes is is uh, Manny Machado. Yeah, for sure, bro. I agree. Yeah, I can't argue yeah. that. 
Yeah. Go ahead, Kevin. No, no, I was just going to say, can't argue that at all. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's kind of must <laughs> dude. Like, the Padres are must see TV, aren't they? They're trying to take that, that, that lineup. Right? That lineup. Ooh. Musker, uh, Rob Musgrove just got hurt in the weight room. He broke his toe. That's that's kind of everything wrong with baseball right now. Uh, you should never be doing anything that should, that'll break a toe in the weight room. <laughs> you know, that's kind of one of the issues with the game right now is that you have more emphasis on strength coaches and hitting coaches. Yeah. But I, you think, you think, I, I, that's I think it's a fad. Le- do you think that's what's leading to the injuries? All the, the more injuries, all the all the heavier workouts, the heavier. Oh hell yeah, dude! You have idiots, dude. You had idiot strength coaches that were soccer players, bro. It's like, dude, you <laughs> don't know what wrong. it takes. Like, how, like how does that translate to? <laughs> it, it doesn't, and it's like, dude, I've seen so many strong ball players that suck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> terrible. <laughs> it's like they're weight room all stars that are hitting like you know two ten. It's yeah. like. Bro, you have to have a balance. It's not like, yeah. I think, and I'm not saying he sucks at all, but I think a guy that kind of gets in his own way with the weights, Tyler O'Neill. Mm. His old man yeah. was a bodybuilder, so there's kind of a pedigree there. But man, like, if if it ain't working, especially when it comes to health and consistency, you got to think like, the muscles are are getting in the way. And I know that's kind of old school thinking, but dude, there's a reason ball players don't look like that. Yeah. Look that's at Chad true. Williams, man. <laughs> Going back to the first thing we spoke about, you know, he does not look like a ball player, man. Right. Just yeah. it's I mean, let's be real though. It's like it's more of a skill than anything, right? Yeah. I, and yeah, I think exactly. that, that gets lost. That yeah. hitting baseball, like pitching, fielding, it's a skill, and you don't necessarily train a skill with weights i know that it's part of it to maintain what you have and your strength but ground balls aren't fielded in the weight room Mm, you don't you don't hit sliders uh like you don't hit sliders in the weight room or by doing like Uh, tricep pull downs like exactly (laughs) you know and i think the big and the teams are trying to start to uh get this mentally that's like the biggest challenge that the game provides is mentally and approach things like that, that on like, it's actually surprising how little that gets worked on, even from an organizational standpoint, they don't really work on that stuff, man. You kind of are on your own to figure that out. Yeah. It's crazy. There's some more, put more emphasis on that instead of the infatuation with all the, the, you know, the bat speed and the, you know, the, how how fast they they're throwing every day? Yeah, right. Yeah. I, I I remember the socks. Uh, the socks. My last year, dude. They gave every every ball, every person. They gave us like that thing that you put on your knob that tracks like this and that. And I'm like, right. I'm I straight up told them, I'm like, dude. First off, this doesn't fit on my knob, <laughs> and I'm not doing that, man. Like, dude, I I'm going off feel, not freaking lines and graphs. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So I think there's there's so much data out there that you can get lost in the sauce. Yeah, yeah. Especially when you chase it. Exactly, exactly. So I just, I have one more question for you, man. Going uh, focusing a little back a little bit more back on you. So you mentioned you pitched and you also uh, played the field. Which one did you prefer? Oh, without a doubt, uh, being a position player. Okay. Pitching, pitching was dude. Pitching was boring. I was a reliever. Dude, we were in the bullpen. We'd be in the bullpen literally playing, uh, <laughs> was it ladder ball? I'd have a collapsible uh, thing where you have like the, like the, like it's like a ladder and you throw okay. this ball attached to a, like two balls attached together by a rope and you okay. try to hook it on the ladder. We'd be playing that during the game because there's only so much you can do, bro. <laughs> right. <laughs> we're just trying to stay loose and stuff. Like, dude, being a pitcher, especially a reliever, it was boring. At least like, just sitting out there, not knowing if you're going in or not. And I guess it would be different if I didn't have all those years of being a position player. I, and I even like said this too, like I hated it so much. I was like, you know what? I got forced into it too. So that's kind of part of it. But I was like, man, I would rather try and fail as a position player than succeed as a pitcher. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't stand it, man. I got weaker. I got slower. 
I, I got a lot less athletic just from the pitcher workouts and things that we did. And I just, it, it put me in a really bad space that I'm so grateful that I was able to get out of for a few years, you know, and wow. get back, get back into the outfield, get back to swinging it. Like I had my best offensive years after I got converted to a pitcher, um, but it also helped me mentally as well. Because then, dude, I, ha- I was able to be like, think both ways, especially in that bad. It's like, all right, what would I throw here? What's it like? What's kind of game plan for this and that? And then, as you know, I'm able to kind of use that reverse psychology, I guess you could say. And it's hey. like, all right, I already know. I already know what you guys would like. I would just go up there. Like, how would I get how would I get myself out right now? Sometimes like that's what I would do after having that ex- pitching experience. Yeah. But without that's a doubt, cool. hitting. And not even hitting being a position player. I honestly, the thing, and I guess I even miss it the most. This is the only thing I miss is playing the outfield, bro. Cause like I had to be pretty decent for my big ass to play the outfield as long as I did. And that's what I missed the most is chasing out, chasing down fly balls that no one thought I had any chance of getting to gunning runners out. Like that was the thing that I, that, that was it. That was my favorite, just playing the outfield, just knowing that I could go out there to right field, dude. And that was my domain. That was my office. Like that was my favorite part of all of baseball still is to this day. That's what's up. Hell yeah. I got one more question for you. I think I know the answer. So would you rather hit a home run or take one away? Rob one. (laughs) Rob one. Rob one. Absolutely. And like, just because you don't get that many opportunities to rob one and I, and Thankfully, and like I got, I got one of them on photo. Actually, I got two of them on, uh, on a, on. A, I got two photos. One of them, you remember the movie Little Big League when Griffey yeah. robs, uh, was it Ron? Like yeah. he robs, he robs him at the Metrodome in center yeah. field. Dude, I got this photo of it. This is from 2009. I was in Low A, so dude, I wasn't even 21 yet. I was 20 in Low A in Kane County, and I robbed this home run in right field at home too. And like I go up and I get it. Oh, hold on. Hold on. I got to get the glove for full reference, right? (laughs) Dude, I go up and I bring it back. And the best part is in the photo, there's a fan who's right there behind me, like going like this, like trying to the face. And and it's in my glove, dude. It was probably, it was, it was the coolest thing ever. Cause like, dude, I didn't, especially when you're younger, dude, a lot of fields have super high fences, right? Yeah, so yeah. then once you get to that, once you get to higher levels, you start playing on padded walls that are eight feet high or nine, whatever the case is, eight or nine feet. It's like, dude, you're actually, you're able to rob it. And to be able to pull that off, that best feeling ever, dude, literally took it away. Granted, I had some taken away as well. So I know how it feels, but without a doubt, I got to go with bringing it back, dude. It just made me feel like Griffey and Little Big League. Uh, yeah. yeah that's so one. um to um wrap up this little interview about you um as far as the twitch journey man when did you start streaming i know you told us a little bit about it before we started recording um what games do you stream and um you told us already earlier too when was the first year you played the show okay so I originally started streaming on a platform. It was Microsoft's version of uh, of Twitch. It was called Mixer, RIP Mixer. I started in, uh, actually, my first stream was like at the end of 2019. So like a, basically a year and a half after I got done with my playing career. And I started streaming Call of Duty at the time. And, uh, and just did that for a while. Mixer ended up shutting down. So I just kind of sh- messed around with different platforms and landed on Twitch. It made the most sense. And... The only reason that I got into MLB the show is because it, it came to Xbox because I hadn't played it. Okay. I hadn't played it since PlayStation 2 in the very first MLB the show in 2006 because I didn't play it. And I even went to the I didn't, I didn't tell you about this, but I, I used to go to the MLB the show spring training parties. They would have okay. launch party launch parties at spring training every year. They would rent out a hotel suite at the W in Scottsdale. Dude, they would give us copies of, of they would give us PS Vitas. And copies of the games. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm not gonna lie, like I had no desire, so I just took it to GameStop and traded it in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> oh dude, I'm not even kidding, bro. I just traded it in. I was like, man, I'm not gonna play this. So I didn't play it from 2006 until 2021 when it came on the wow. Xbox. And I didn't even I didn't even buy it. And so wow. I started playing, started playing it. And then I was like, dude, I love this. It makes the most sense for me. And 
And now with the name Flank Thomas, it's it makes a lot of sense with that name. So I've been streaming that. Like, that's the only game that I create content around. And it's really funny that I played professionally for a decade, right? 08 to 2018, my career, my playing career. Dude, I like the only big league time I got was in spring training. So like none. And uh, I start streaming MLB the show. And in year two, I get invited to the MLB all-star game. Insane, dude insane it's opened up doors it's opened up doors that my playing career never never did that's crazy all from my freaking guest room <laughs> that's so dope. crazy yeah, dude I did, see, I did see your video sorry kevin but i don't no, no, i saw his video where he went to la to the creators cup or something like yeah that. dude it was, yeah it was right where they had the mlb draft the night before damn bro it was on that that's stage dope. they converted it to like an esports thing yeah it was sick dude I never, dude, I never sniffed, dude, I didn't even sniff the big leagues, let alone the all-star game. And then I get paid to go out there as a freaking streamer with eye black. <laughs> <laughs> go figure, man. Right? Hey, it's man. crazy, dude. You made it one way or another, man. Oh, and this is way more fun. I'm not going to lie to you, man. It's way more fun because I get to, dude, you know, like all the posts that you guys make and all these players, most of them are in the game. So I get mm -hmm. to enjoy baseball more now than ever. That's dope, man. It is, man. It is. So, do you have any other questions for Flank, Kevin? No, man, I'm good, man. That's it for me. Yeah, just one more, Flank, before we let you go. Um, no doubt. Who is your Who is your favorite current player? Oh, go Tani, dude! Like, yeah. it's for me. It's one A and one B because, like, Trout. It's kind of sick. I like. It's also it's Trout, but like. Otani, dude, no, he's an alien. Nobody can do what he does, him being a two-way player. The dude hit what 47 bombs. Uh right. Was was how many was it? A couple years. 2021, right? When he yeah, his MVP year, right? I think he did hit 45 plus. I don't know how many exactly though. It was like, and then like, dude, he's one of the best pitchers in the world. He's disgusting yeah. and only getting better as a pitcher. He's he can fly. You need him to play outfield. Sure. Years. 46 pumps, dude. As a, and he's a starting pitcher slash DH. You need him to go play the outfield. And I saw somebody say this. Uh, I, it was like, it was somebody on the angels and it makes a lot of sense. They're like, dude, if he played in the outfield every day, he'd be a gold glover. Like mm. he's just that good. He's the best baseball player on the planet. Mm. And, and, you know, I've said this, uh, you know, a few times, dude, he is must see TV. He really he is. is. He's in baseball needs that more than ever. He is must see TV. He is an attraction. He has people like, dude, the fact that they can't win is another thing, but dude, they're filling mm. up stadiums on the road. Cause he's pitching. Yeah. Mm. He's a superstar. And you probably have like, uh, I'm sure so many people appreciate him, but you have, and maybe there's a few other people that have played in the, the pros. You have a huge and deep understanding of what he probably has to do to be able to perform in the in, on the mound and in the box you know dude at the same you, time hit, yeah because yeah. you you yeah. you pitched and you you played in the outfield you know yeah and like i did an emergency i came in in my career i came in like little league style from the outfield like three or four times and pitch actually like four or five times and pitched like that i couldn't imagine doing it every fifth day <laughs> you know <laughs> you know and then like staying in the game as a hitter like DHing after you come out as a pitcher, like the amount of preparation that it takes. I've watched like a really cool video somewhere on YouTube about just his, what he does and how maniacal he is with his training and whatnot. That's obviously what it takes. And even then I can't imagine. That's wow. Yeah. Uh, so we'll end this episode on that note. So um, we appreciate you guys having me, tonight. man. Hey, yeah, I appreciate tonight. you, man. It's Thank so much fun, honor, dude. Man. You guys are awesome, dude. Like, I, I'm telling you, I love your posts. Keep doing what you're doing, dude. Because, like, we're eating it up, bro. We're eating it up. Absolutely. And, like, I think the cool thing, too, is, like, you guys aren't old heads either, you know, at all. Yeah, like, how, are you guys in your are you guys uh, in your 20s? Yeah, late, I'm, late I'm, 20s. I'm 31, yeah. Okay, fair yeah, enough. Okay, 29. nice. Dude, that, I think that's awesome, though, because, like, that will put you guys as tweeners. Because you can relate to older guys as well as younger, younger kids, you know, you're not lost in like, there's no generation gap between basically the entire baseball fan base and you guys. So I think that's really cool what you're doing. 
and keep it up, dude. Seriously, you guys are crushing it. I love your account, love your content. And now just hanging out with you guys, you're awesome dudes. It's good to see good things happen to good people. And we appreciate it, man. I'm sure Kevin can add to it, but um, it's just, uh, it's crazy, man, especially to hear like all that love and appreciation from you. Like for us growing up the way we did, you know, like in the city and all that shit. Like, just to be able to do some fun stuff based around baseball, man, it's such a blessing to just be doing this, you know? If you don't mind me asking, where'd you guys grow up? Um, we I we both grew up in Santa Ana, different parts of the city. Um, gotcha. So, for anybody that doesn't know, that's uh, Santa Ana is the main city in the Orange County, which is, Santa Ana is about five, ten minutes away from Anaheim, where the Angels play. That's where Micro uh-huh. Center is. Yeah. 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 <laughs> goes there, yeah. But yeah, that's where we grew up. Um, you know, not so friendly part of the city, you know, just Word. just trying to trying to trying to like um play baseball, man, and just something we've both been in love with since we were kids, and it's just cool as hell, man. That's awesome, dude. Keep it up, y'all. Seriously, thanks again for having me on. I really do appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah, so, man, thanks. We appreciate you, man. So yeah, well, with that, we'll let you guys go. Thank you guys for kicking it. Peace.